Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, today we're going to go through 1099 form filing for stage 100. Uh, I want to thank all of you guys for attending um, and taking the time out of your day to join us. Uh, I know it's your end and, and things are a little bit crazy and that this year is even worse than normal. Um, so, our agenda, 1099 preparation. We're going to go over non-employee compensation conversion, 1099 test drive for our forms, generating 1099 forms and e-filing. To prepare for our 1099s, Atrix will go ahead and do the e-filing for you, or you can print your own tax forms that you can purchase from Sage 100, or you can purchase them from somewhere else. But just make sure you get the four-part perforated forms. As part of our Form 1099 preparation, we want to make sure that we, we go through and we do our due diligence and we clean up all of our vendors, make sure all of you make sure you have all of your contact information, check your 1099 boxes, make sure we have our W-9 forms. I would also run your payment history report or your AP invoice history report so that you make sure that you have all your vendors that you want to include for your 1099 filing. The more work we do up front, the easier it's going to be for us when we actually go to file and we'll eliminate any questions or any errors that could come up. Your 1099 filing, we're going to purchase our 1099 forms 2020, the four-part perforated forms. You want to verify your Sage 100 version, process all 1099 vendor payments and or your invoices for 2020, so you want to be completely done with 2020. Install 1099 non-employee compensation hotfix. If you have business 1099s or your miscellaneous 1099 business, reach out to RKL um, for the solution to run. There is a separate utility that we have to run to move those. Um, but sometimes they, there may be a little bit of a hiccup with that utility and we may have to come up with another solution. So just reach out to RKL if you have that problem and we will help you guys get through it um, so you can get your filing done on time. Uh, run your non-employee compensation conversion utility, and we're going to download and install federal and state tax reporting if it isn't already installed. Download and install your 2020 tax forms using Atrix, and then always test drive your 1099 forms and validate that the data is correct. We should be tying back to SAGE. And again, to tie back to SAGE, it's either going to be that payment history report, your check history report, or your invoice history report. 1099 preparation, you do need to be on the latest versions, the latest product update versions, and SAGE only goes back to 2018. So if you're on something lower than 2017, you need to reach out to RKL so we can come up with a solution for you. Um, to verify your versions, 2018 product update 10 is compatible. Version 20, 2019 product update 4. Version 2020 product update 1. Like I said, if not if one of your versions is not one of those, reach out to RKL and we'll go ahead and get you going on a solution so we can get filed on time. To determine your current version of Sage, you'll open up Sage, go to your launcher, help, and then at the very bottom there it says about Sage. It'll tell you what version you are. You can take a screenshot of that and just send it over to support and that will get the process started. 1099 preparation, as I mentioned, versions 2017 or lower are not compatible. There's also some third-party products that are not compatible. With those issues, like I said, we have a solution. However, 1099 forms will not be able to be ran out of stage 100. We will have to export the data and provide another solution for you. So reach out to RKL support so we can make that happen for you. 1099 preparation, the form, after you have had your correct product update installed, things will look a little bit different. We have this new non-employee compensation form. So if you go into vendor maintenance, after vendor master file maintenance, after you've ran all of your 1099s, you've done all your due diligence to make sure our vendors are good, you'll see where we have that 1099 reporting feature, go to your history, 1099 NEC will look a little bit different the utilities is what moves that from box seven to our box one. Ten ninety nine form preparation, another another 
part of our housekeeping is we want to make sure that our uh, company contact data is correct. You can change it when we go into Atrix if for whatever reason you do not want to change it in company maintenance, but at least make sure your federal EIN number is on there and then you can make changes to your company information in Atrix, but I recommend that you have it correct in company maintenance. Non-employee compensation conversion, there, like I mentioned before, we, there is a hot fix to go ahead and move that data from that box seven to the box one employee NEC. We always want to back up stage 100 before we install any hot fixes, and this way we recommend that you reach out to our RKL to do the hot fix or on their own, or we can go ahead and do it and go through it with you. But don't try it on your own. Um, download and install your 1099 AP6001T. And like I mentioned, reach out to our RKL support for any business 1099 so that we can walk you through how to get those done correctly. Run the 1099 Employee Compensation Utility. This is the utility that's ran. And then this is the actual program that we will run when, it, when we update your 1099s. This feature will come up after we've ran that AP underscore 1099 utility. This comes up and this is what's actually moving everything for us from that box seven to that box one. It does it does produce a text a text file so that we can review it and see what vendors were were um, affected by it. This is company specific, so if you have multiple companies, it does need to be ran in each company. So we say yes. The utility will move the following box four, box seven, box 16, and box 18. We'll also move miscellaneous box 10, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 15, 15 B, and 18. I, I, there are a couple issues with these, so if, again, I recommend you reaching out to our kill and we run the utility together, or we go through those vendors and we discuss a plan to, to be able to get your 1099s processed on time. And the utility will do the following for all 1099 miscellaneous records. These are a couple of utilities that are ran after the fact, which clear up the old boxes and move them for us so that you won't see any anything lingering from the utilities being ran. Um, box 7 would have no description on that. These utilities will run that, will fix that for you so that box 7 will not be blank anymore. It's just some housekeeping for us to do. A non-employee compensation conversion must be performed on each workstation when running the 1099 forms. The, the, federal e federal, and the federal and state reporting has to be installed on each workstation that is going to process 1099. So if you have multiple people running 1099s or if you've gotten a new workstation, I know a lot of clients have gotten new workstations going from 7 to Windows 10, and if we haven't ran the, the download for federal and state reporting, they won't be able to run their 1099s. So um, be mindful of anyone that's got any new computers. Um, let us know so that we can get that fixed for you. And preparing for your calendar year, the 1099 preparation go into AP reports, Form 1099 e-filing. 1099 forms are processed through Atrix. And you can always test Atrix before you're in at any time that we want. It doesn't hurt anything to run through this process, make sure everything is working correctly, make sure you can access the forms. It will not hurt anything, and I highly recommend it. Versions 2018, 19, and 20 AP reports, form tax reporting, is going to look a little bit different. We have new here and we have our employee form is going to be NEC. So you will have to make sure you're mindful of your form types to your drop down. There are multiple forms that are there now. Our minimum year to date, <clears throat> excuse me, click the box, put in your 600, and then accept, and HRICS will start to run. 
this automatic update. Unfortunately, during your end, it's going to continue to pop up um, pretty consistently as, you, as you're running through your 1099s. So just make sure you say automatic update, let it run through the process. We don't have an option to select which forms, let it run through, select everything, let it go. It doesn't take long, maybe a couple minutes. There is a way to manually download Atrix um, for 1099 for reporting. If you do run into the situation where we can't automatically update, reach out to RKL and we'll help you get this done. Um, but there, there is always a way for us to to work around a problem that might exist, might come up. Just let us know if something happens. 1099 test drive. You can test drive them, or you could just say no thanks, and you can just go ahead and start your processing. Either one are going to achieve the same the same goal. The grid with inside Atrix will look like this. Depending on how many 1099s you have, will determine how 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 big this grid is. Um, you, you can use your bar in between to scroll back and forth to see more boxes or less boxes, depending on what you're doing. You should be able to tie out our boxes back to Sage, or if you have them tracked in a spreadsheet or a separate report. Atrix will take care of all the filing for you. They will send the report, the 1099s out. They'll file our 1096s. Um, so we don't need to um, purchase the forms. We don't need to worry about mailing them. Everything is sent electronically and e-filed for us. Uh, for the cost, it's it's well worth it. Plus, we get our confirmations, and we know that they the we know that they've been sent out. We know that they've been received to the best of our knowledge. Mm -hmm. Um, the wizard will pull all the 1099 information from SAGE, so again, verify that all of your information is, is correct in SAGE, and then you won't need to verify that it's, that it's well, of course, look at it, but you won't have to have the problems of, of having to go through every single line on this grid verifying if the data is correct. If you've done your due diligence in housekeeping within SAGE 100, it saves you the time now, and it's also going to save you the time in the future years moving forward. Next year will be easy because you've already done the hard work this year. SAGE always has their year-end resources. If you are not a member of SAGE City, I highly recommend joining it. There's a lot of good information in there. They have a whole year-end resource. Um, it, it's fantastic. Um, and you can always reach out to RKL support for any questions or any issues that we have. Um, or, an, or um, a consultant that you, uh, you have contact information for, reach out to them as well. We're all here to help you get through this year end. It's, it's, it's a little crazy. <laughs> We're all in it together. So we are here to help you guys get through this, whatever we need to do. And that's it. Are there any questions? You can type them in the chat box. Karen says we are planning to e-file. Where are the um, questions? In the chat box. Caroline Wu says they are planning to e-file. For the okay. recipients, we still need to print the hard copy and mail it to them. Is that correct? Not if you're planning to e-file, no. Atrix will take care of it all for you. You can still print a copy internally and keep it you know, in your file, but Atrix will handle it all for you. They'll do the e-filing. They will send it to all the recipients. I believe that there's an email address as well. as They'll get an email telling them that they're 1099. They'll get it in an inbox. Are there any other questions? It 
Leslie Shaw says, I already filed yesterday. Does it update to next year in SAGE automatically? I know before I got a message. I don't remember getting one at this time. That's a, that, that is a really good question. If it didn't, if you went ahead and filed your 1099s and it didn't prompt you to update your period to 2021, we can change it in AP options and manually change it from 20 to 21, and it's going to ask you if you want to update your 1099s. So if it didn't prompt you, we can go ahead and do it. We, we can um, manually do it for you. It should have. I don't know why, but um, we can still get it done. So just let me just reach out to our kale support. Um, and they can help you do that. It should be should take just a couple minutes to get that done. Okay, a slew of questions are coming in now. Um, so no need to purchase forms if you e-file, correct? Yes, correct. Okay, can you please clarify the process of separating the 1099 NEC and miscellaneous? They're two different forms. So when you go into your 1099 maintenance and you do your drop down there, you're going to see your NEC and you're going to see a miscellaneous. And then you're going to see an individual and you'll see a business. There's multiple, there's multiple ways you can, you can do whether it's individual miscellaneous, individual NEC. Well, individual NEC, it should always be NEC, but the business could be um, NEC or it could be miscellaneous depending on the type of business that they are. So it could really be either or, but they all work through through Atrix. Okay. We just have to Jonathan, make sure we run those utilities to update it correctly. Great. Jonathan is asking, do you see any issues if we use another company to do all of our 1099s? Concerned about losing history and Sage showing previous vendors that received 1099s. Just make sure you're in options. Our history is set to... I recommend at least seven years that we have in there. Um, as long as you do that, um, you'll be fine. If you want to be extra safe, you can always go through the Atrix and do the test drive or and, and print them off internally to just a plain paper to keep a copy of them. Um, you can certainly do that. So I think that answers Mary Ann's question that you still have the option to print and mail the reports rather than e-filing. Yes, of course. Okay. Um, and I think you already answered this one. If you electronically file, how are your 1099 folks notified? I think you said they will be emailed. Right. If they're set up with an email, they'll get an email. Otherwise, um, they they won't be notified. We get a confirmation, but the Atrix will then push it through the regular mail, so it would just be sent as if you had sent it from your office. That that's the only confirmation we can we can get. To say to know that the um, recipients actually receive them, I recommend if we ha can get as many emails as you possibly can. It, it just saves the question. Okay, Mary is asking. Atrix is compatible with Macs. Oh man, that's a good one. I have no idea. I don't use Macs. I try to stay away from them. Um, I, Sage <laughs> isn't compatible with a Mac, so I would imagine. No, but Atrix on its own may have something where you could download on your own if you're using something else. Otherwise, you would probably access through remote desktop maybe. I don't know. That's a good one. <laughs> um, Caroline is asking, if we need to re-e-file the corrected form after sending the first one, do the same step as the very first original submission apply? Yes, it does. And actually, when you and well, I don't know how far they they are with their programming and getting everything ready for for amended 1099s that we've already filed. But when you go to file it through Atrix, it will come up and it'll take care of the amended right there for you with the correct form. So make sure you have it corrected in Sage, and then let's go through Atrix and run through your 1099 process. It should find that original submission and then run through the um, amended, but I don't know if the feds have amended forms out yet. But, so that, that's a good one too. This will conclude our presentation.